twin city of Habaros, situated on the banks of the mighty Amur River. With its ability to trade freely with China, Habaros is another potential economic powerhouse in the Russian Far East. And still further east are the wilds of the Kamchatka Peninsula, a spectacular land of volcanoes, geysers, and hot springs along the Bering Sea. Until last year, the Kamchatkan city of Petropavlovsk, Kamchatsky, was perhaps the most closely guarded in Russia, but now is a bustling commercial and fishing port. These cities of the Far East lie seven to nine time zones away from the watchful eyes of Moscow. What I found in Vladivostok was, uh, uh, first of all, a, uh, a sense of real dynamic growth, that, uh, uh, that uh, Moscow is 6,000 miles away, and that uh, a lot of the red tape and, uh, and prob bureaucratic problems that Moscow represents in many people's minds uh, here don't exist or at least we have a sense here that we can that we're, we're our own people that we're a long ways away and that we whether Moscow says so or not we really can control our own fate control our own destiny these people were so far from Moscow that they were responsible for making some decisions before they actually would get this guidance from Moscow so uh, that's why some Americans would tend to think that it's easier to work in this part of the country, and I tend to think so, too. Uh, it's a frontier type of mentality um, that we are making it happen. In Moscow, they're sitting around having meetings about it, but here we are actually out there doing it. The entire Russian Far East has seemingly limitless natural resources, coal, timber, fish, gold, diamonds, and oil. Of course, natural resources, but uh, the people are, are, I think, one of the best natural resources. Although once censored from the free world, these highly educated people comprise a society that boasts an incredible literacy rate. The major observation which I hold firm to is that the Russians are extremely intelligent. Most of them are very highly educated. 75 years under the shroud of communism, this nation was kept in the dark about capitalism and free enterprise, effectively locking Russia in a time war while the rest of the world was living in the 20th century. Anytime you um, start a new business venture uh, to a foreign country, you expect changes and challenges but with opening our serve with the opening of our service to uh, the Russian Far East I think it was doubly so not only because of the cultural and the uh, and the language barriers but just simply because you're dealing with a group of people uh, in a system that was or that is completely um, void of the understanding of a free market and the entrepreneurial system Undoubtedly, the transition period will be lengthy and difficult. The Russian Far East is an area whose infrastructure needs complete overhaul. New government policies need to be formed, and the existing bureaucratic structures and taxation procedures are confusing at best. As a result, much of the everyday small business is occurring off the books. But most importantly, all this activity will help boost the economy and enable the people to create their own destiny rather than to leave it to the Central Committee. For so long limited to the meager goods of state stores, these people are hungry for a wide variety of foreign products. Until now, Russians have only been acquainted with foreign consumer goods through high-priced purchases on the black market. Today, bustling marketplaces occupy once barren fields, and industrious Chinese merchants cross the formerly sealed borders to sell anything and everything to eager Russians. Now that the borders and markets are open, waves of inexpensive manufactured goods flow in from China, and used cars enter Vladivostok from Japan by the shipload on a daily basis. 
The changes are happening. At the request of the Russian government, the United States Peace Corps has come to help with the situation. They are sending in business aid to teach the philosophy of capitalism and transform unproductive state monopolies into competitive enterprises. The new wave of volunteers includes a wide range of successful corporate executives. Their roles vary from small business centers to key consulting positions within Russian companies and government agencies. I'm a Peace Corps volunteer. I've been in Habarsk now five months, been in Russia a total of eight months. The first three months we were all in Vladivostok for training. I was posted to this bank, I'm a banker by training, uh, to help them get their international operations up and going. I'm uh, originally from Boston. My previous experience has been, I spent 12 years as financial vice president of Southwide Inc. in Memphis and the director of the company. I've also been chief financial officer of Mississippi River Transmission Corporation in St. Louis and Dynatech Corporation in Massachusetts. Peace Corps espouses three virtues. One is that they t transfer technical skills. The other is that they show the life of, uh, of Americans to the host country people, and that also you then bring back what it's like to be in Russia or be a Russian. With the Peace Corps in action and the innate determination of the people themselves, the Russian Far East economy is taking shape. And great opportunities can be found for American marketers if they make their move now. The so-called good pickings ought to be early on. Uh, the dregs are going to be later. Uh, American business right now has this um, waiting uh, position like I'll see what will happen and if it is good I'll jump into it. I would encourage them to start earlier because uh, it is a very promising part of the country. Akfes is a company that was formed as a private company in late 1989. Today it has several departments involved in construction, automobiles and automobile services and parts, international, um, tourism, international trading, and through joint ventures, several other things. It's a growing company, it's having its growing pains like any other growing company in America. But it will get through them, we're sure. Uh, the economy appears here to be strengthening, as witnessed by the increasing number of cars on the roads, and the fact that new automobile sales in our automotive division department uh, may quadruple this year. And sometimes the Russian party will take their second choice or third choice only because American business is not available or are still reluctant. Uh, we are the Coca-Cola distributor in this part of the world for imported cans from Hong Kong. And we hope next year to build a bottling plant here in Vladivostok. We have the space. We believe we have the water in the space that's been approved by Coca-Cola. We are doing the planning now and preparing a business plan and hope to have that available. This will have to be a joint venture with some investor, preferably from America. Uh, the company is currently talking with some Japanese prospects uh, as a joint venture partner for Coca-Cola. But we would like to talk with some Americans. The rebuilding of this economy and its supporting infrastructure will be largely dependent on hard currency investors and Western expertise. Russian companies are privatizing, expanding, and modernizing. The opportunities for foreigners are immense. And uh, when they tell me what choice they've made and who their partner is, I just say, oh, no, no, don't talk to this American company or that American company. And they say, Sasha, we cannot wait forever. We need to move ahead. We just need to do something right away. And if American companies are not ready for us, we'll do it ourselves or with someone else, and they do. And it's real unfortunate because after spending three years in the U.S., I just see how many American companies can't fit in, and the click would be just, you know, this famous chemistry is right there. 
of every hundred business people getting off the plane, perhaps one is an American. We'd like to see that one increase. We have a consulate here. The consulate has been very active. And it's here to serve Americans here as well as American business. The Commerce Department will be building an information center here for the benefit of American business. One American entrepreneur has moved in and promises to be a vital link between the Russian Far East and the United States. Since January of 1993, I've been practicing uh, here in conjunction with uh, three Russian partners, um, and the name of our firm is the Pacific Law Center. We represent probably about 80 percent foreign companies which are investing in Russia, in the Far East, and primarily in the Primorye of Vladivostok region. In identifying areas of need, even the most basic services, such as telecommunications, need to be modernized immediately. And we have people coming in, World War II veterans, to try to get telephone service. The war ended 50 years ago. They're still on a waiting list. Telecommunications were never a priority under communist rule. A year ago, we, uh, we lived in a telecommunications black hole. You uh, had to book an international call through the operator. Sometimes it would come, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, if, if it did, you often had to wait hours, and the connection was very poor quality. Now, I have two lines, two satellite lines running into this office. One through KDD, the Japanese telecommunications giant, the other through cable and wireless. So I can pick up the phone and just like uh, dialing San Francisco to Los Angeles, dial an area code, and the uh, quality of transmission is very, very high. Another basic need, transportation, is ripe for investment. Traveling in and out of Russia was once monopolized by Aeroflot. West Coast Americans had to fly around the globe through Moscow. But now, Alaska Airlines has helped to remedy that situation by providing a much needed service to the Russian Far East. We actually started looking at service uh, to the Russian Far East in the late 80s. Uh, and in 1991, um, our efforts uh, came to fruition and we started serving the cities of Magadan and Habarovsk uh, three times a week for nine weeks during the summer. This is our third season so that takes us back to the uh, really the mid 80s when we first started talking about um, some sort of, of Russian flying. Initially our service to the Far East was predominantly tourism and group charters, people doing leisure things or adventure, uh, outdoor adventures. Uh, but in 1992 we, we saw a dramatic shift uh, of more and more business independent types of travel and in fact by 1992 it was almost 50 percent uh, business and independent and uh, the other half uh, leisure and tourism. We look at it as a developing market one that uh, we're, we're pleased with the addition of Vladivostok and that's showing some real promise in terms of both tour and business potential and we continue to look at uh, other Russian Far East and other Russian flight possibilities. Getting around within the Russian Far East also presents its challenges. Meeting this particular travel need has become a specialized business for a young French pioneer. Uh, last year I had the opportunity to come here uh, for a couple projects and look around and decided to come back and uh, start a charter business, uh, air taxi, air charter business. It's looking very good. For next year we probably will have our own airplanes operating in the whole Far East, uh, as far as uh, Eastern Siberia actually, and probably some international flights also between uh, Japan, Korea, United States and the Far East. So, looking good. Whether importing or exporting, the ice-free port of Vladivostok is a key link to Europe via the Trans-Siberian Railroad. In Vladivostok, shipping and transfer companies are thriving. Vladivostok ports now mainly handling, uh, handling such cargo as steel, 
steel products, cement, uh, some portion of cotton, uh, and other break bulk commodities. We have good chances. The time I consider the time of possibilities now in Russia. And moreover, I am so optimistic that we are here on the right place. With the emergence of new private companies, there is also a prime opportunity to invest in them. In Vladivostok, one of the world's newest stock exchanges is now in operation. Trading three days a week, the exchange currently executes approximately a million dollars worth of orders a day. Uh, my name is Viktor Sakharov. I'm the president uh, of Vladivostok International Stock Exchange. It's a very young stock exchange. We are only one year old. At this far eastern end, the Vladivostok Stock Exchange is seven hours ahead of Moscow. In all of Russia, Vladivostok alone trades shares of private companies. The other exchanges are limited to commodities or vouchers. I think it may be interesting for the Americans because uh, this region is, uh, we have very, uh, uh, maybe main companies, uh, mineral, mineral companies, mining companies for Russia. Uh, and uh, especially companies connect, connected with transport. The new elite are creating new suburbs in the American style, building houses paid for with new cash. And where there is construction, there is a need for building supplies. And Jelly Plotnikov has already privatized the Habarovsky roofing paper plant. The employees now own the company. Looking forward, he sees the upcoming need for innovative building materials. Now he is looking for a foreign partner to help move his factory into the 21st century. The tourism industry is another virtually untapped opportunity. The Kamchatka Peninsula is the Russian Far East vacation spot for the likes of mountain climbers, hunters, and fishermen, those who aren't necessarily looking for luxurious facilities. The hotels that currently exist are Spartan at best, and restaurants are few and far between. A more typical tourist would demand much finer amenities, and would certainly expect services like bus systems, rental cars, souvenir stands, and nighttime entertainment. Nevertheless, some curious travelers have already discovered this vast wonderland called the Russian Far East. And it was extremely fascinating. Uh, so I certainly will encourage my friends, and my friends are traveling people, to do this trip and encourage them even to stay a little bit longer. I think my fault was that I didn't stay longer. Nine days is not really enough. And I can't wait to get back to work so I can make more money so I can come again. We're already planning our next trip. It was so fabulous. As travel gets easier for the typical tourist, the industry will most certainly boom. But people are really excited to be here. Um, they've heard so much about Russia and and it's, it's everything that they expected and nothing that they've expected. It's, it's amazing. The changes going on in this country, every single day there's new businesses opening up. There's a lot. There's Americans, Japanese. You can't, you can't miss it right now because this is a historic event and uh, it's not going to happen again. So it's, it's amazing, really. Another very real opportunity for development lies hidden in the now defunct defense industry. This region occupies a tremendously strategic military location, the same location that now makes the Russian Far East an ideal trade center. The industries here that were dependent on defense operations are waiting to be refitted and their people retrained. Some investors believe the most obvious choice for these operations would be the home electronics and high-tech industries. Some of them are working for the city administration in real estate, helping real estate privatize. Some of them are at the CRY administration helping them privatize um, a wide variety. Uh, one's at a former defense, largest defense plant, helping them convert from defense to commercial. This telephone plant formerly manufactured top secret military electronics. Within the last couple years, Variag has converted to civilian products. The people are now paid according to their productivity, a new type of incentive. I'm convinced, though, that there are some real high-tech finds, some real opportunities in, in the high technology area because the defense industry is looking for foreign capital now. 
It is looking for foreign management expertise. It is ready. Uh, the secretiveness is dropping away, and that industry is ready to cooperate uh, with uh, if, if foreign investors will make reasonable proposals uh, that are mutually advantageous. A monumental stumbling block for every business in the Russian Far East has been the ruble. Hyperinflation has devalued the unstable ruble almost 800 percent. By default, the U.S. dollar has become the base currency. Some businesses have been able to overcome the currency problem with creative negotiations. Part of what makes it work for both Alaska Airlines and Aeroflot is our ability to uh, exchange services. You know, one of the, uh, the biggest challenges inherent in any sort of uh, Russian-American uh, cooperative activity is the uh, ruble exchange challenge. And uh, we've been able to overcome that uh, really from the beginning in that uh, we had a, an obvious exchange of services need, uh, fuel uh, on the one hand plus ground service uh, activity. The business climate here is ripe, but it takes an adventurous individual or company to tackle the problems. The rewards promise to be great. So for someone who is really serious about entertaining uh, a business venture or a business opportunity in the Russian Far East, or for Russia, I would think, for, for that matter, my only suggestion is be prepared to go three steps forward and two steps back. You know, expect the unexpected, that's what I say. And be very flexible. <laughs> That's, for, that's the biggest part, patience, flexibility. So just do it, I think. The entrepreneurial spirit appears to be extraordinarily strong here in the Russian Far East. But the rest of what makes for success may not come so naturally to a people whose government ran the only business in town for the last 75 years. In terms of specific business practices and techniques, it may be necessary to teach meticulously and from the ground up. Generally, I am fascinated by the, by the entrepreneurial instincts of the Russian. Not having had the demand economy training, um, but having an instinct perhaps for survival or just an instinct for business. Opportunities abound for the adventurous of heart and ambitious of nature. So this uh, area is leapfrogging in a lot of ways, you know, into the 21st century. And um, for the people who are willing to take the risks and brave all of the difficulties and put up with all of the nonsense that you have to put up with in Russia to do business, uh, they are going to be in a position to, uh, to make some very handsome profits. There are so many wonderful things about this country. The people are great. There, there's so many things that I hope don't change. Uh, I mean, I've never met such friendly, warm, and generous people. Uh, people who not only sort of accept their fate, but really um, make the best. Uh, they, I think, are far happier with less than, than many people I know in America that have a lot more. And I'm afraid that as they become more westernized that some of that will be spoiled and, and that's sad to, to see as they start uh, chasing the buck like, uh, like we all do and did. Uh, so that's, that's kind of concerning to me but I also see that uh, the reason that we're all here is that they don't have any choice to go back. It's been very exciting for the state of Alaska and very exciting for Alaska Airlines to be part of that. And I think that uh, we've looked at this market a little differently than we would classically look at a, at a new market in that uh, <clears throat> uh, it's not the profit motive that's led us to do this. Uh, although we hope that, you know, somewhere down the line, it may prove to be a profitable route. Uh, but perhaps more importantly, it's that uh, we could play a very meaningful role in um, um, bringing back together, in some instances, the, uh, the native peoples of uh, both Alaska and the Russian Far East uh, and also uh, you know help do our part with uh, bringing the two countries together and uh, again relinking uh, some of the historical links that were severed uh, back in the 40s when uh, you know all of a sudden there was there was no more travel between the two regions this is a vital part of the world economy and that's a reason we are here the world economy is in our hands, 
and it is our chance to help our new friends. The time is now. The place is the Russian Far East, and the opportunity awaits. We have no time for pessimism. <laughs>